Rock stars, welcome to the guitar show. This is day two, where today we're gonna be looking at advanced finger picking. That's right, advanced fig finger picking. Yesterday we talked all about beginner finger picking, which, as I always say, the, the beginning is a great place to start with anything, right? Start at the beginning, start with the foundation, start with the stuff that you don't know. Everybody who's ever started finger picking has had a problem with it because they hadn't done it before. I know that sounds very commonsensical. It's, yes, it's a new word I just made, but it sounds very common sense, right? But it is true. And we forget about this when we're learning how to play guitar. So we, we had to learn all that stuff yesterday. We'll revisit some of that stuff today. And we're gonna talk about some advanced bits today, okay? So number one, I'm so glad that you guys are with us today. Welcome, you saw Emmy, newly engaged Emmy. She's off the market, boys, so you're gonna have to ease off, okay? Ease off with the comments, she's, she's taken now, all right? Um, no, we are, uh, we're gonna dig into this today. We're going an hour today, from 11 a.m. to noon. Gonna start with the lesson, and then I'll be taking your questions in real time. There's a PDF for this episode. You'll find that, it's the first link below. Click on it, looks something like that, right there. There it is, oh, thanks Mike. It's high-end stuff, it seriously is. There's lots of exercises in there and if you don't have this thing, if you don't have this thing, it's gonna be difficult for you to even understand what it is that we're talking about because there's a, a protocol for this. We use letters for the fingers, uh, there's certain patterns and if you just wanna just haphazardly just claw away at the strings, you can do that, but that might be why you've never really gotten finger picking in the first place. It's because you're just kind of playing around at it. And so anything that we want to get serious at, we've got to look at, we've got to focus and get serious with it. Otherwise, that's okay. We could just play around with things and not get very good at them if that's what we choose to do. But when you choose to get good at something, you're gonna have to lean into it. You're gonna have to do more than what you've done in the past. Otherwise, you're just gonna keep getting the same result, right? Make sense? Sure it does. So we talked about these bits and pieces yesterday. You've got the PDF there with all the beginner stuff. And now we're gonna be looking at the advanced finger picking stuff today, okay? If you would, before we start, a few things that I want you to do. Number one, Download that PDF, super important. You don't have to sign up or anything else, just click on the link, first link below. The second link below, you're gonna hear me talk about that a bunch, especially when people ask questions because 90% of the questions that you guys ask can be answered in that program. If I flippantly just try to give you an answer here, for even if I took two minutes on a video that took me 10 minutes to make, which one do you think might have more information? The video that's in high detail with PDFs and everything else for you or a two minute explanation of that without a PDF? You got it right, the first one. So, and here's the deal. I provide that whole course for you for free. Yourguitarsage.com slash UGS should be the second link below. Get in there, my friends. I promise you it's gonna absolutely change the way that you think about the guitar. Okay. Lastly, if you would like this video, click the thumbs up. If you've done it already, don't do it again because that thumb will go away. Then share it with whatever platform you're on. We have Instagram today. We've got Facebook. We've got YouTube. We've got Twitch. We've got some other places too. So wherever you're watching us today, if you would share this, it would be so kind. It would be a great way to give back uh, to me if this lesson helps you, okay? So thank you so much for that. Uh, hit, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, okay? Here we go. Indie Dead, thank you so much. The PDF is a, is a game changer, but it's not gonna help you if you don't know how it is to decipher it, okay? And that's what we're gonna do right now. In fact, Mike, if we can, let's take a look at that PDF again. Oh, hi, I noticed you noticed my shirt. That's right, look at there. This is the new swag that we have that's in our Teespring store. And we understand, actually, when did we order these, Mike? About two weeks. About two weeks ago. Okay, so if you have ordered anything on Teespring, they're a little bit slow right now, I'll be quite honest with you, and I apologize for that. It's nothing that we can do. It's a different company that makes these, right? We're not making them. Um, but we just ordered these, and I think it was, I think it, Mike's saying it's two weeks. It felt less than that, but maybe it was two weeks. So nonetheless, 
that's about how long it took to get to us. I know other folks have, have, have purchased and it took a little longer. Um, so if you would just, um, if you would just be patient until they can, they can get all their stuff worked out during, I mean, everything is slow right now, isn't it? it Amazon's not two days anymore either. Uh, okay, so there you go. Uh, but if you'd like to order it, right underneath this video, there, I believe there's a, a whole little line of things that you can order. Some cool swag, all right? All right, so here we are, let's get into this. So let's take a look at that PDF, uh, Mike, and if, if we can. All right, and let's go to, let's go a few pages in because I want to show the advanced part of this. And if you can make it a little bit bigger, Mike, that'd be awesome. If you can't, I understand that too. Do we need to see you? Um, <laughs> nah, I'm not that important. I mean, that's, that's, that's great, Rare, that, there, that's all I need. And then go into that uh, very colorful page. Okay. Okay, good, yeah, right there. Okay, now. Now this one, now I can't read any of that, but it's okay, I, have an, I know what it says, okay? And so here's what I want you to do, is I want you to think about finger picking is, you know, yesterday, Mac, Mike, you can take that off the screen, we'll, we'll come back to it in just one second. Um, let's do this, when we, yesterday we talked about basic finger picking where we had a certain pattern, like maybe it would be uh, P-I-M-A-M-I. -M -I. If you don't know what that means, you weren't here yesterday and you didn't get the PDF and you need to do that, okay? So, P-I-M-A-M-I. -M -M -I. Even if you don't know what that means, basically, it's this kind of finger picking where we are arpeggiating through something. That's one type of sound. And that's kind of like a beginner finger picking bit. I know some of you are saying, Eric, I can't do that. Well, that's okay, you're a beginner. Everybody started at zero, no one could do this in the beginning, and then you start practicing it, and miraculously, you get better. And the more you do that thing called practice, the better you'll get. It's really magical. Uh, so let's say you're down to this now, but you wanna do stuff like the, uh, like the Travis picking, right? Or I talked about yesterday doing kids right here. This uh, you know the the song Kids by MGMT right. This is a more advanced style. Because what we have here is I'm not thinking block chords, um, and in fact, if you listen, you can hear that I'm playing a bass line and a melody line at the same time. And they're both two, doing two different things, right? So this bass line's going. And then I have a melody line going. Oh, over the top, okay? That's a bit more advanced. And in order for us to break that down, you could be like me when I was 16 years old, 15 years old, something like that, and just grab whatever piece of sheet music that you want and that you're not ready for. I picked Bore, you've heard it before. That was my first finger picking piece and my first piece of sight reading music that I ever looked at and there's no way that I should have ever gotten, gotten near that. And if I was an instructor, a guitar instructor, at the time, which I wasn't, it was a couple years later that I was, I would have said to my student, don't you dare do that because it can be quite overwhelming. Now for me, who was just absolutely obsessed with the instrument, it didn't overwhelm me. It was sure frustrating because it took me months to learn that piece and I didn't know, I didn't know how to read music so I had to read it one note at a time uh, or I should say I wasn't very good at reading music. Reading music is much like anything else. The more you do it, the better you get at it. So it's not like you can have a lesson, know how to read music, and now you can read music. No, it's a practice. So since I didn't practice that, I wasn't very good at it. For most folks, I would suggest not doing that sort of thing because there is this frustration level that if, you, if that frustration level gets too high and you don't 
understand that this is a process and that the more you do it, the better you get and what have you. Seems very logical, but I can tell you from, from seeing literally hundreds of thousands of comments at this point in my life, and seeing so many students say, will I get better if I practice? <laughs> yes, of course you're gonna get better if you practice. If I do this more, will I get better? Of course you will. But since I'm seeing that all the time, I know that folks don't understand that the more you do this, the better you're gonna get. So you do have to understand that. And, um, and but, but what's more important than that is, what it's, that's very important, but the other thing that you need to remember is try to give yourself something to do that is out of your reach, but not so far out of your reach that you believe it's impossible, okay? Let me give you an example. If you make X amount of money this year, and I said to you, do you think you could make X plus, you know, 10% of that? You might go, yeah, that's very doable. That's, that's, I, that's in my belief system, I can do that. Great, good for you. Why don't you do that this year? If I said, take what you make this year and, and 10x that, that might be outside your realm of belief. It's not outside my realm of belief, I believe you could do it, but you're the person who's doing it, so you need to have that belief system. If you don't have that belief system, it's a, it's a muscle that you need to grow. And just like practicing guitar, when if you have a piece of sheet music or something set before you that's way too difficult for you to do, you're going to malfunction. You're going to start believing in myths, and you're going to put the guitar down. Okay, But if you do something that's outside of your reach, not too far outside of your reach, and then you attain it, then you're gonna be like, ooh, I just did that, that was awesome. And you're gonna get a little endorphin hit, and then you're gonna to wanna to come back and do it again, and then you're going to have a, a bigger prize, and a bigger prize, and a bigger prize. And you can do this with guitar, but if something's too out, outside your reach, and I'm going somewhere with this, if it's too far outside of your reach, you're just gonna believe the myth, and you're gonna put the guitar down and say, yeah, that Eric guy couldn't help me either. When in fact, it has nothing to do with me, I mean, I can show you the way, but really it has to do with you embracing and doing things step by step in a, in a, in a fashion that you're gonna be able to learn it. That's why I have the system that I have, the Unstoppable Guitar System. This is why I let you in it for free inside Standard because you can see the step by step process, okay? So with all this stuff and all that to say, where we're going with this today is that I could say, sure, learn this. Go, here's the tab, go. And you might sit with it for a week and be very frustrated with it. It took me about a day, a solid few hours maybe, to come up with this arrangement. And it took longer, maybe another day, for me to get good at it, proficient enough to where I felt comfortable with it, okay? That's with all my experience of playing. Now, you know me, I like to break things down. I like to break them down so that you can see every little minute detail, because when you do that, then your mind can conceptualize what is going on, but it can't otherwise. If you're just looking at a piece of sheet music and it's the first time you've looked at it, then you're probably not gonna have that ability to conceptualize it. It's too much information. So that's what this PDF is all about, okay? And so what we're gonna do is this. When we're just thinking about the, the basic arpeggiating through a chord, the only thing we have to think about is the pattern, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. P-I-M-A-M-I. 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 And that's the only thing we need to think about. And you think about the block chord. So C. A minor. F. G. C. A minor, F. So with my left hand, I'm just thinking of a G. I'm just thinking of the chords as they come along, C. And I'm thinking about the pattern. But when I'm doing something like this, I mean, we have different things happening. First off, we have this bass line happening, which we could kind of think about as a a pattern, sure, it's a pattern. It's doing the same thing every time, right? But this bit up here, you know.
right? That's a whole nother pattern. Then when you put the two together, You've got sometimes, I mean, this is just solid, right? That'd be fine if we could just sit with that, but that's not the way it is. We have this melody that goes bum, 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 bum. Different, we're holding those notes out for different lengths of time. They're occurring at different times. And unless we can break that down, which is what we're getting ready to do, unless we can break that down, it's gonna be very difficult for you to get this idea. And so I found a system for teaching my students, as I've done for decades, to teach them exactly how to do what I just did there, okay? And here's the other good news. I'm not magic. I had to figure this out my own way. I'm just making a way for other people to get it much quicker and much easier than the way that I did it. Make sense? So let's take a look at this. So let's look at that PDF. And what we're going to do, essentially, is we're going to incorporate all these different bits here, but one at a time. So notice at the top here, it says one, two, three, four, right? This, we have to start at the top. We have to start at the beginning. Everybody starts there. We have to be able to count. So if we're counting one, two, three, four, which by the way, you should be doing this also. You should be doing it with me, okay? So we're counting, this is all we're doing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or if you have timing issues and you're not counting with me right now, it could be that you're not able to count. And that's the whole point. So we got to do this, okay? Then we want to be able to count the subdivision. So we want to go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And so the and is the up part of the beat and the number is the down. One and two and three and four and Right, when our foot hits the ground, it's a downbeat, typically a down strum. When our foot comes up, it's an upbeat, usually an up strum. So one and two and three and four and. Make sense? Good. So we're counting. We're not even playing yet, okay? Now, if you notice, right after that, you have, so, so we did quarter notes. Quarter notes are when we have four beats or four notes in a measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Each, th those are measures. So one, two, three, four, that's a measure of music, okay? That's why we start over again. Then one and two and three and four and. So now we have subdivisions in between those. Then we have, and those are called eighth notes because there's eight notes within a measure. The other ones, one, two, three, four, are called quarter notes because four quarters make a dollar, four quarters make, four quarter notes make a measure, okay? Or a whole note. We did eight, one and two and three and four and, or we could say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but that's not how we do it. We say one and two and three and four and, okay? And then if we wanted to subdivide it again, we could do sixteenths. So 16 sixteenth notes will make a whole note. So we have one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. So basically you're just, and it's right there in the PDF, you can see it on the screen, download the PDF, first link below. So instead of counting one and two and three and four and, we need a protocol or a specific way to say these so that we can get 16 of those in there. And this is, the, this is what musicians have come up with because they're a bunch of weirdos like me. One e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. You should be able to count all three of those before you ever put your fingers on the guitar. Because if not, if you can't do this, if you can't conceptualize this in your head, how is it gonna come out in your hands? Unless you've got a brain in your hand, which I don't think you do, then you've got to be able to conceptualize this and be able to count it out loud. Make sense? Good. You guys are tracking with me so far. Okay, now, notice that, remember what we talked about yesterday, P-I-M-A. P, we'll just go like this. It's, it's uh, Pulgar, Indice, media, Medio, and Annular. And I believe those are Spanish words. Doesn't matter. I remember it like this. Pick, 
for a guitar pick or plectrum, because a lot of people use their thumb instead of a guitar pick. I don't advise that, but they do it anyhow. Index, I for index, M for middle finger, right? A little kid was running around the house the other day. He had a boo-boo on his middle finger, and he kept giving me the bird. It was hilarious. Got lots of pictures of it. Or, and then lastly, is your ring finger, right? Your ring finger, Emmy knows, she just got engaged, is where you, where you put your ring. It's your anniversary. You can think about it like your anniversary finger. A, okay, so P-I-M-A. Very easy to remember if you remember those four things. And so what you're seeing here on the screen here is you're seeing lots of P's and I's and M's and A's. And when you see that, that means that's the finger that you should be playing. It doesn't tell you what string, that's up to you. You do whatever you want. I'll give you a basic protocol so that we can do this here, but we talked about the resting position yesterday where your thumb goes on the sixth string, your ring finger goes on the first string, your uh, middle finger goes on the second string, and your index finger goes on the third string. So it's a nice resting position just like that. See how we got that? It's just like literally resting just like that. Well, that's all you get. You don't get the other side. <laughs> so there you go. That's called resting position. You just have your hand like that. So that if you were to arpeggiate, all the fingers are in the right place just automatically. Cool? Good. Now, let's look at this first little bit here, and you'll notice that for number four, it's in uh, tan there, it's P, 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 and those are on the quarter notes. So it would be very helpful if you did this with me. Let's do it. Not for me. I know how to do it. This is for you. So let's do it together. Ready? So if we're counting one, two, three, four, then we're going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's gonna feel awkward. Because you hadn't done it before. I say it all the time, my Mandarin sucks. You know why? Because I never learned it. So why would I be good at it, okay? So finger picking should suck for you right now. You should be terrible at it, which is great. It's good news because this is where we're gonna start, okay? You gotta start at the suck stage and then stage one is a little less sucky. Stage two is even less suck than that. And then eventually, as you go up the ladder, it's scientifically proven, less suck will be there. Make sense? So, thumb, quarter notes. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. When you're doing this, you should not be taking big swipes at the guitar like this, okay? Just small, just whatever it takes to get that note to sound, okay? Now that's number four on there, okay? Now watch this. Um, P I P I P I P I. We start off nice and easy. Okay, now let's go ahead and use the thumb on that sixth string and let's take the first finger and put it on the third string where it naturally would fall from resting position. If some of this is over your head, then either you didn't watch the broadcast yesterday and or you didn't do the homework, right? Andy Daly says, suck it up. That's right, suck it up. It's true. So here we go. So now what we're going to do is thumb and first finger, and that's gonna be on the third string. So we're gonna go one and two and three and four, and one and two and three and four and... Have you ever heard that the watched pot never boils? Yeah, right. Well, what's happening right now is a lot of folks are so concerned with, well, what about my fingernails? What about my fingertips? What about, what about, what about, what about, what about? as opposed to just playing. And in order to get you to that level where the only thing you think about is playing, and dear God, I need to not fall off this horse, I need to just do this thing right now, you kind of need to be overwhelmed just a little bit. And that's what we're trying to do right now, because if I'm saying to you, P-I, 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 you're not worried about a finger now, you're just trying to hit the strings in time. So this is also very good because it pulls you out of this place of being too analytical. This is a daggone musical instrument, okay? It is meant to be played from the heart, not the daggone head, okay? There's nothing wrong with using our brain, using our analytical mind to break the guitar down and all everything else, figure out how it works. Steven, thank you so much for the donation, buddy. That's fine, but at the end of the day, it's all about 
the heart. It's about our emotions, okay? It doesn't have much to do with the brain. The brain has to execute a few things, but I think you know what I'm talking about here, okay? So now we got this, right? What, what speed should you do this? The speed that, that allows you to get it and to understand it. That's the right speed. And end of story, period. There's no other thing to say about that. That is the right speed, okay? In time, after you get accurate, speed is a byproduct of accuracy, never before. Accuracy is something you can attain today, but your thought, your desire of where, where you should be speed-wise is outside of your realm of today. It is for everybody. I've never met a student who's like, I play too fast, I play too accurately. Never seen it. So where, where we want to play in the speed is always outside of our realm of at this moment. So if you're always chasing that, you're always going to be frustrated. But accuracy, my friend, is something that you can get right now in this moment and it'll give you the same endorphin hit and you'll know that you're moving forward, okay? All right, uh, Benito from Scotland said, it's not being analytical, it's being anal. Yeah, it's true. Um, okay, so here you go. So now we're on to the blue here. Now notice, um, let's see, we have uh, P-I-P-I-P-I-A. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're bringing in that ring finger. So now I would go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. You could be holding a chord for this, it doesn't matter, but I would prefer you not because that's more energy, right? More mind energy that's going to something that is not going to serve you. There's a lot of people doing this in the world right now. Their minds are stuck on all sorts of things that are not serving them and not serving the world. If you can be one of the ones that focus on the things that are serving you and serving the world, you're gonna be so much better for yourself and for the rest of the world. So get this hand out of it for a minute and just focus on that picking hand. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, okay? And you, you can literally look at that on the screen right now and you could say it out loud. P I P I P I P A P I P I P I P A. Get it? And then now if you notice the next one down just moves that little A over to the and of three. So it'd be P I P I P A P or sorry, P I P I P A P I P I P I P A P and so we're moving that and then we move it to the second, the end of the second beat and then the end of the first beat. You can see it, it goes like a set of stairs backwards. And then we start doing pinch picks, okay? So when we have P and A at the same time, so let's look at, um, I think it's number, I think it's 10, if I'm looking at that correctly. But you can see on, on the four, this is in the light blue area at the top, I think it's number 10 all the way to the far right, you can see a P A on the and of four. I'm sorry, not on the and of four, on the beat of four, the downbeat. So in this case here, it would look something like this. Uh, one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four, okay? This becomes very meditative and very soothing, by the way, if you just like, Focus on this and, and just do this. Not only will you be getting better, you literally will get peace because uh, when you just focus on one thing, like, dear God, like people have done for tens of thousands of years now, where they focus on a candle or they focus on their breath or they focus on zero, they focus on nothing, they focus on a tone, whatever, it has uncanny abilities to help you when you are out of that meditative state, when you're going throughout life, when you're dealing with your kids, when you're driving in traffic, when you're playing guitar, when you're dealing with your business, working out, eating, whatever, okay? Very, very solid stuff. So you're getting double the benefit when you do this sort of thing, okay? 
So now, so you've got pinch picks, right? You've got where you're picking two notes at once and that's where you see the two letters at the same time. So far we've only done, you know, downbeats and upbeats as far as the picking. Now we counted one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a right, Six, 16th notes. And so let's take a look at that. We're not gonna exhaust all of these, okay? We're just going to do some of them. So let's take a look at our first set. So you can see the very top, we have uh, the tan, and then we have that light blue, and then we have kind of a lighter brown, and then we have a little bit of a darker blue. And that's where we're going now because this is our first introduction to a 16th note. Okay, and this is gonna be a little tricky for you because if you're not counting in your head, it's gonna make it more difficult for you to, to land right on it. Charlie O'Connors, thank you for the donation, buddy. Super kind, really appreciate that. That helps, that helps keep things going here. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's do this one together. Let's count it out loud first, okay? So this is number 18, okay? And we're gonna say, our downbeat is this. Okay, so we're gonna go, P I P I P I P I A P I P I P I P Sorry, let me do this again. P I P I P I P I A P. That's it. Okay. Now, if you ever so, I literally just messed it up, and I had to do the the, the tapping here. Okay. Again, one and two and. Now we're counting sixteenth notes. It's one e and a, or one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. So you can think about the downbeat is the is the is the uh, number, the and is the up, and the uh and the are in between. It's in the movement. So one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e. And uh, make sense? Cool. All right, so in this case here, we got P, I, P, I, P, I, P, I, A, P, I, P, I, P, I, P, I, A, okay? And that's, what, that's how we're gonna count this. This is gonna take longer for some than others, but get that out of your mind whatsoever. Where you're at's where you're at. We're on, a, we're on a continuum. Where you're at's where you're at. It doesn't matter where you are, it's where you're going. So if I were to do this now with you, I'm gonna say P, I, P, I, P, I, P, I, A, P, I, P, I, P, I, P, I, A, P, I, P, I, P, I, P, I, A, P, I, P, I, P, I, P, I, A. And again, you're gonna be focusing on coming up with that pattern. And then what's gonna happen, what's gonna sneak attack you, is that all of a sudden, because you're not focused on, this doesn't feel right, this feels odd. Of course it does, it feels odd for everybody. You're not gonna be worried about that, you're gonna be concerned with the pattern. And then what's gonna happen is sneak attack from the side, all of a sudden, you can finger pick. But we still have to learn all these little patterns, okay? I still have to learn all these little patterns. Now, the way that I, you know, when I'm teaching this kid's song, right? Which I think I have a video for that on YouTube. I have a lesson for that, for sure. One of, my, one of my online students uh, created a, a, a transcription of my arrangement of this and they posted it to Ultimate Guitar. And um, I can't tell you which one it is. If you were to just do a little Google search in like Eric Andreas, MGMT, Tablature, you're probably gonna find it. But all that being said, you could just read the Tablature and, and go for it and that's fine. But this is going to get you there as well. And at the same time, like I said, you're gonna be focusing on the pattern, so all of a sudden, you don't realize that you're actually finger picking. And that part of it is gonna be something that's not in the equation anymore. Now you're just focusing on the actual patterns and executing those patterns. Once you start doing it enough, your brain starts going, okay, I know what you're trying to do here. Then you can 
pick a piece of music up and you're gonna be much more equipped because you have all the little assets in place, right? I mean, I talk about it all the time inside of UGS, UGS Pro or UGS Standard. I talk about the juggling unicyclist on a tightrope. This dude's doing three different things at once. He's juggling, he's on a unicycle, he's on a tightrope, and chances are he didn't do all those things at once when he was a baby. Chances are he had to learn. There was one day where he said, I'm gonna learn how to ride a unicycle. And there was another day, maybe years later, he said, I'm gonna learn to juggle. And yet another day where he said, I'm gonna walk on a tightrope. Forget about doing all three at once. And then you slowly start graduating and putting these things together. This is the story of guitar, friends. It doesn't happen all at once. It never has for the top pros of the top, 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 top. It's never happened for them. So why in heaven's name would you and I think that it would happen for us? It's crazy talk. We need to earn the guitar. We need to earn where it is that we're going. But good news is it's super, super fun. And there's a step-by-step -step method just doing what we're doing here, okay? Okay, I think that you guys have a good idea of this because I think we covered the basics of, of all that in there. That being said, if you need more help with the basic understanding of everything that we're talking about today, I have a ton of free lessons on YouTube. Search Your Guitar Sage Finger Picking. The Unstoppable, Unstoppable Guitar System Standard, yours for free today, second link below. Do those two things, okay? Uh, I also have a finger picking course. A bunch of folks got in that yesterday where I teach this song, but I break it down with all, the, with all the exercises there that we did in the advanced section of UGS. Cool? All right, the pro section. All right, good. Let's get to some questions, all right? Now, even though I'm looking at YouTube right now, we have access to all the comments. So if Mike sees one that's great on Twitch or Facebook or anywhere else, he's able to put that on the screen, okay? So now would be a great time for you to let me know what questions that you have. All right, let's do this. Uh, don't forget, PDF is link one below as well. While I'm looking for this, while I'm looking for a question, if you don't have a question, I'm gonna be looking right now. Otherwise, go ahead and put your question into the chat right now. If you don't have a question, like and share this if you would. Thanks, friends. All right, here we go. Someone's asking for links. All the links are below. Oh, Esther, you are the sweetest. I swear, you must be my mom posing as Esther Rooney because the way that you talk is so sweet and kind. It's like my mom. I feel loved. Thank you, Esther. Do you hybrid pick with fingers and pick? I do, Colin, sometimes. Not very often, but I do. I find myself just doing it kind of automatically. Max, how long did it take you to not suck at this? Remember I said to you folks that people ask this question all the time, this sort of thing. It's a gradual process. When did you learn to walk? It wasn't the first day that you walked because you sucked at it. I remember you were all wobbly and oh, I'm gonna fall, I'm a baby, right? I did the same thing too. Everybody did. It's because babies don't know how to walk and they get that, that footing kinda a little bit, right? But they're not very good at it. So you didn't learn to walk that day, okay? It didn't look like walking to me. You were barely hanging on. Right? But then you learned, the next day you learned a little bit more, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Now we got it, okay? We got a pretty good idea of it. But um, there's not a day where you just have it, because that would mean that there's nothing else to learn, so it's just always an ongoing process. You'll know when you've gotten to where you want to be by just practice. So the question more should be, it's a good question though, Max. Uh, the question should be, how much can I practice today? That's a better question. That's gonna get you to your goal quicker for sure. Okay, do you have any advice on how to keep the thumb baseline going when you're plucking that PIMA fingering? Billy, the second part of the PDF that I gave you is the answer to that. Because remember, you're talking about maybe, well, 16, I mean, how many exercises did I have on there? Probably like 20 or so, and that's not exhaustive. That's just giving you the basics. 
So right there, go through, go do, ne do exercise number one, then exercise number two, exhaust everything that I've done there, and that's still not exhausting everything. It's just getting you to start understanding this. And eventually, you'll just get it. You'll just get the idea, and then you'll be able to, to, to go it alone. But that's how you want it. That's how you want to get there. Can you explain how to get better at perc percussive guitar? Androidness. Uh, I would, except that's a very broad question. That's like, can you tell me how to get better at drums? What you're asking is, how can I get better at this in the quickest way possible without spending a lot of time? And the answer is, you can't. That's the truth. You may be another guitar teacher out there that tell you it's true and then take your money and then you're never gonna get there. That's not me. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna cut straight through the crap and tell you that does not exist. You can get there, good, get good at percussive fingerstyle guitar. How good of a fingerstyle guitarist are you? If you're not good at that, I would focus on that because all this stuff that people pop in and doing all this stuff, no one really cares about that. I mean, if we're being honest, no one cares. There's no guitar player who's like, that is so awesome, I wish people would smack the guitar more. What they do like though is they like bits and pieces where you're doing like, Right? Get good at the basics first, and then if you want to get into that one little level of percussive guitar that like only seven guitar players absolutely are obsessed with, then do that. But you know, getting better at, at per percussive finger style is a step-by-step -step process, just like everything that we're talking about here. It's all little tiny steps. There's no giant step. It doesn't exist. And I'm the most hopeful person that you're ever going to find but I've got to be truthful with you. You're not going to take a quantum leap that I've ever seen uh, when it comes to guitar playing. It's, you can get a conception, a, a conceptual idea, and the light bulb will go on, but that's one little subject that you're going to add to your arsenal of like thousands of bits that you're going to learn going on, right? Question, is it best to leave your unused fingers on the strings I noticed you didn't. Donald, that's a great question. So it's up to you is, is the answer to that. It's really up to you. There are times where you would want to mute a string and that's where I would mute the string. There are times where you want that string to ring out so you don't want to mute the string then. There are other times where it's okay if you do it because it, that string doesn't need to sound out. So if you want to rest your fingers, then rest your fingers. So. The rule is, if it's working, it's working. You'll hear me say that a lot, especially inside my programs, is if it's working, don't try to fix it. There's nothing wrong with it. You're up in your head and you're thinking that something's broken when it's not, when there's 10 million things you could be working on. So don't worry about that one thing that isn't broken. Focus on the things that are, that you need, the place that you need to go. So if your chords sound good, if your finger picking sounds good, don't question it too much. In fact, don't question it. If it sounds good, don't question it, really. Oh, beautiful, I love that. Thank you, Drew. Uh, Eric, just your philosophy helps me hang in there whenever I get frustrated. I can't thank you enough for that. Thank you, bud. <laughs> love that, okay. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a, a great question. So Derek's saying, is the lesson over? Derek, the lesson has just begun. My lesson to you today, uh, other than the questions, is over because if I, if, if I literally sat with you and brought you through this process, uh, we would be here solid for uh, a good month and without ever, me ever going to the restroom. It would be a month that we would do this. So the work is cut out for you. If you want to get good at this, you can. You could feel that forward momentum in any area that I teach on guitar, you will feel that massive forward momentum. And that's really what you're looking for. Everybody thinks it's this end goal. It's not. It's forward momentum. What you desire in your heart, whether it's guitar or anything else in life, is forward momentum. You want to feel growth. You want to feel like you're getting to your goal. When someone takes a first step to walk Everest, they're not like, damn it, I thought one step would do it. 
they keep, they know that it's going to take a time, but that forward momentum keeps them going. And as they get closer and closer, there's this drive. And you can have this on the guitar or any other area of your life, but you have to do things step by step. And for everything, there's a method, okay? So, uh, so the lesson, as far as what I'm saying, it's over, but I've given you this PDF here, plus with all the videos that I give you for free, you have a lifetime of work ahead of you if you, if you want it. In UGS, can we choose our path, pick or finger style? Yes. Inside of UGS, I've got lots of lessons on blues and rock and swing guitar and all sorts of bits, right? But then I have sections where maybe a whole video section on finger picking, okay? So yes, you definitely can do that. Thank you so much for the donation, Dan. Learned uh, a lot by doing this. Are you using fingernails or fingertips? Dan, it's really a combination of both. Right now, my nails are a little bit short, but they're long enough to be hitting the strings. I filed my index finger nail back just a little bit too far yesterday, so I've noticed I'm using a little bit more of my finger than I want to, but no big deal, you know? Again, it's like, just go forward with it. Uh, so try not to get too analytical. If you're just using your fingertips, it's perfectly fine. Can you throw on Facebook? Oh yeah, let's do it, Mike. Let's Question from Facebook, yeah, thank you so much. Mark Will is saying, when I play guitar, usually I play it perfectly. Good fingers on the right strings, but as soon as I sing, I kind of cheat. It still sounds good, but I know technically it's not right. Any tips to help me? Mark, yes. The same thing with everything that we're doing here. It's all about slow it down, break it down. Slow it down, break it down. Um, the juggling unicyclist on a tightrope, that, that anecdote. You have many things that one needs to do, okay? If you were to try to think about them all at once, no one can do it. We are, that's not the way we are. We can only think of one thing at a time, believe it or not. I know some people think they can multitask and do different things at once. They're not really doing that. Their attention's just flitting from here to there and what have you. Some people can navigate that better than others, but it's kind of an old way of thinking that's going away. It's as, as quickly as it came, it's going away. People are back to focus, hyper-focus, deep focus, deep work, those sorts of things, because you're gonna get to where you wanna get too much quicker. But in order for us to do that, Mark, we have to cut out all the fluff. We gotta cut out the things that are getting in our way. So, or slowing things down, right? A scientist doesn't look at dirt and go, oh yeah, it's brown. It's the brown stuff. <laughs> they put it under a microscope and they go, oh dear Lord, look at this. There's microorganisms in here. What kind of microorganisms in there? Well, we can't tell with this microscope. Let's get an electron, uh, electron microscope. Is that what it's called, electron? think. Anyhow, it's a, lot, it's a lot sharper. So they can go in, they can see things much more magnified. That's how they discover. That's how you're going to discover what it is uh, that you're trying to do here, which is sing and play at the same time. So, so you're saying you have the, the playing down perfectly. Great. So that's an asset. We're going to set that aside. Now what you're going to do is you're going to say, can you sing the song perfectly and without looking at the lyrics? Because if you can't, that's going to be your Achilles heel. That's the weak link in your chain. Chain is as strong as its weakest link, right? So if that fails, if you don't know the lyrics very well, then if you're on stage and you can play perfectly and you forget the lyric and then that malfunctions your playing and then you start crying and you run off the stage and you trip and people are throwing tomatoes at you, well, that's a much bigger thing than we, when we actually needed to do. It's just the one little thing that you had the mistake with, which was the lyric. Maybe you need to recite the lyric more, memorize the lyric in some way so that it doesn't turn into, oh, I suck at singing and playing at the same time. I'm never doing that again, right? Let's find out the one thing that's the problem. You can have a Tesla and I don't know how Teslas work, actually. I think they're much different than any other car. But let's say we have a $100,000, $200,000 $100, Rolls-Royce Ghost sitting out there, right? And if one spark plug is not in there, or the oil leaked out overnight, that one car is useless, right? And we can just throw, we just throw it away. Or we might go, well, what's wrong with it? This was an expensive car, let's fix the one thing. That's what you need to do here, Mark. And so figure out what it is that's the problem. Now, what you're talking about here, I have a whole course for. I also have some videos on YouTube. Search Your Guitar Sage Singing. Your Guitar Sage Singing, and you'll show, and I'll 
give you an example how I break things down. But like for instance, let's say, let's say we were doing um, uh, Hallelujah, right? Um, Well, there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord But you don't really care for music, do you? Okay, so I might say, okay, well I can't, Eric, I can't do that yet. Awesome. Let's slow it down. Let's break it down. Well, what would breaking it down look like? Well, it would look like not doing something that you're doing right now. So maybe it's just like this. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. Okay, so now I'm not finger picking, I'm just concentrating on the strumming. So I've taken something out and I've allowed my brain to literally, I'm not usurping all that energy into, I got a finger pick. I'm now taking some of that mind energy and putting it into, well, what, I'm gonna focus on that lyric and get that lyric right. I'm also going to repeat it, right? So I talk about looping and chunking all the time. So, the secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. And then I would repeat that. Secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. And, to, and if that isn't good enough, then I'm going to slow it down even more. And if that's not good enough, I'm going to take the lyrics out. <laughs> What's happening, Mark, is you're juggling with too many balls. I say this all the time. If you're juggling, if you can juggle with, with three balls, great. And then you're like, man, I'm doing this great. I'm going to jump to five. And you're having an issue with that. Well, then you might want to try four. If you're so good at three, try four. If four is too many, what could you do? Let's think about it. Well, you can't do three and a half, but you could do three and do that more and more and maybe faster and find some way to challenge yourself juggling three balls more or make juggling four balls easier. Maybe you're throwing them higher up in the air so that you have more time to think about them, right? So that's what you want to do with this stuff is maybe you're spacing out the chords further or you're becoming less sparse so that you have the mind energy to do this, okay? Really what we're talking about is mind energy, synapses connecting. And if too many things are flowing over that wire at a time, just like your internet connection, it's going to get bogged down. This is what a nervous breakdown is, is people are so stressed out that their mind just goes, uh-uh, and you have a nervous breakdown. So we have these mini nervous breakdowns like this if we can't get to where it is that we want to get to. So Mark, I've got lots of videos for you. Search, slow it down, break it down. If you're in UGS, I think that one may be on, it may be on um, the internet, on YouTube. It's vague, on the internet. Um, IBM method, the, inter the uh, inventory breakdown method, I call it, is also on YouTube. You can find that one for free. This is more of a mentality, it's a psychology, and if you can get into that psychology, then that psychology will go to what it is that you're doing here. Uh, some people may say, what the hell are you talking about, son? Sh shut up and play. That's the reason why they're not able to play, is because they're not understanding the psychology of this. There's no one on God's green earth that doesn't know that if you spend more money than you make, you will go into debt, you'll have a deficit. We all know this. This is not rocket science. But yet, the majority of the world is in debt. But they know that principle, but they're not applying that principle. So that's what I'm saying. You, you understand these and you can go, yeah, 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 I know that. It's not that. I'm having a problem with my singing and playing at the same time. No, nope. you don't have a problem with singing and playing at the same time. You have a problem with breaking things down. And if you can get behind that psychology and you can understand that, you can break this stuff down and you can do it with everything, not just this, but with, you know, you know, the, the blues bits that I show you and everything else, developing a solo, songwriting, it's all assets. You, you divide and conquer, you get this asset, you get this asset, you get this asset, and then you bring them together, and now all of a sudden, you're rocking, okay? But I promise you that that's the, there is not a, a amazing guitar player who hasn't sat next to me here yet to when I tap into the way they do things, the way they develop things, it's the same exact thing, okay? 
and it was the same for every great out there. Jimi Hendrix and Eddie Van Halen and all the rest. They all broke this stuff down. So if you're overwhelmed at anything you're doing, which everybody in here is overwhelmed with guitar, I know that because I've never met a student who wasn't overwhelmed. So you get, have to understand this psychology, you have to adopt it, and you have to practice it. You can know it, you can know it, and not do it, right? The people who are in debt, they know that if you spend more than you make, you're gonna go into debt. They know it, but they're not practicing it. So they really, what's the use of knowing it? It's about application. Some people don't know things, but they're doing it, and they get the benefit. Does that make sense? They can, there are people who understand that uh, life and death is within the tongue, that you can speak death or you can speak life. They know this, or they don't know it necessarily, but yet they live it. They're very positive people, and miraculously, their days are more positive than the person who knows that that's the way they should speak, but yet they don't do it. Make sense? So you don't even have to know it, you just have to do it. If that is completely confusing, then I'm sorry. Uh, all right, so can you please play 27 over a D chord? Number 27 over a D chord. Mike, can you pull that up for a second? 27. Okay, over a D chord. Um, now, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get close to this and read it because I can't see it. P A A A P. Okay, so this, is, this would be, so I'd have to do this slow, right? But it would be. Right, so we have a uh, 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a. So if I, so somebody said, whoa, that's difficult. It's not really. I mean, I'm playing this a little bit fast, but I'm just doing this. Now you can hear I have an emphasis on it, right? 1, two, three, two. one E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E. And so I'm playing that one louder. So I can think, okay, well, for the loud one, I'm gonna pluck my thumb. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pinch pick. So I could go. And I'm also slowing it down. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Once I get it accurately, I could speed it up. Make sense? Oh, and that you said for a D chord. Yes, 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 yes. When Travis picking, do you sometimes use the index finger for the bass line instead of the thumb? Ashish, I do all the time, but really when you're talking about Travis picking, like traditional Travis pickings, that thumb is playing the bass line. Okay, so you're doing this. Otherwise, you're doing this. Oh, hey, Robbie Calvo is in our chat right now. And friends, we're going to get ready to drop, in 15 minutes, we're going to be dropping an interview with Robbie Calvo. If you don't know who Robbie Calvo is, my friends, you are missing out not only on a, on a wicked good guitar player, but an amazing teacher and just an all-around amazing dude. Um, he is my brother from another mother. He is, uh, he is my twin. I love this guy. Uh, that sounded really egotistical, didn't it? Sure. Sure it did. I'm sorry about that, but that's not what I mean. I mean, like, Robbie is absolutely amazing. Uh, he, and in 15 minutes, I did an interview with him just a few days ago, and in 15 minutes, we're going to drop that video. So we'll put the link in here. I'm going to get to one other question here in just a second. Uh, but Robbie has a, an amazing looping and phrasing course called the Phrase Trainer that dropped just a few days ago uh, and you've got to check this out. Okay, so in just a few minutes we're going to have him on. So Robbie, hello my friend. All right, so let's get to just a couple more questions and then we're going we're gonna to head over. Actually, we're going to go a little bit longer today because um, we're, we're going to drop this video in 15 minutes. So I, we're going to go just a few minutes longer here, okay? And then we're going to all head over there. Okay. Uh, hey, Eric, do you have a Chet Atkins finger style lessons? Yes, I have what's called Travis picking, which is this idea of doing like a... You've heard, you know, um, 
Mr. Sandman, that sort of thing. This is Chet Atkins style, also known as Travis picking. That sort of thing, okay? So, and I break that down into bits that you can can digest because you can't just do that all at once. I didn't, Chet didn't, Les Paul didn't, didn't, uh, Travis Barker didn't. I'm joking, it's not Travis Barker, it's um, um, Merle Travis. It's uh, a little joke there. Travis Barker was the drummer for Blink 182. Guy with all the tattoos. Uh, okay, YGS Crew link for MGMT tabs. They do not have it. You're gonna have to do what I said there. You're gonna have to do a little search. Search uh, Eric Andreas MGMT finger picking tablature because otherwise you're just gonna find my video for it, okay? Indeed, Robbie says the mind is the strongest muscle we have. Yeah, absolutely. Can you show us some hammer-ons while finger picking? Yeah, so, so you can do that. You can do like, um, right? You're not gonna think about it too differently than what you're doing already. So I would do something, you know, you've heard me do this kind of thing, this kind of bluesy thing. What I'm doing on the low end is a is a hammer on. Obviously hammer ons and pull offs there. So you can add those for sure to all of this and it's gonna be make it sound even cooler. Yeah. Mike, let's get that uh, straight shot again if you would. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, good, 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 good. All right. Oh, beautiful Esther, yes, don't miss uh, Robbie's interview with Eric. And if you're wondering why Esther knows about this, it's because she's in UGS. And if you are in the Unstoppable Guitar System Pro, then you are privy to all of the videos that we put up on YouTube. You're privy to those before everybody else sees them. At least the, the, uh, the interviews and the, um, lessons. the lessons. Not not the songs so much, but all the other stuff, which is the majority of what I do anyhow, right? It's not the destination, it's the journey, 100%. There you go, that's a psychology, and that psychology will change everything for you if you, if you understand that. Okay, good, good. If there's any others on any other channels, Mike, just let me know. Yeah, yes, yeah, so someone's asking about Chet Atkins finger style. There's a, a Travis picking section where I actually break this thing down for you. That this, uh. So if you love that, that, that is the whole lesson. It's me teaching you how to play that style, okay? Someone's asking, uh, Sid Hick is asking, hey, are you crazy? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, someone's asking how long you should practice, and you know my motto for that. If you're totally 
fine with sucking, then don't practice that much. If mediocrity is your plan in life, then practice a medium amount. But if you want to be exceptional, then practice exceptionally and don't even ask how long you should be practicing. How, say, how much can I practice today? That's what you should be asking. What kind of bull crap can I knock out of my life so that I can focus on stuff that's going to move me forward and make me feel better and play guitar or do whatever? You know, that's, that's a great question. Oh, the librarian was asking that. Should I, only, should I start only practicing the exercises and for how long a day or should I find a song to learn? You know, here's the deal. For me, a song is a carrot, meaning it's a goal. It's something that you're going to desire. Exercises are kind of boring. They really are. But I have had tons of exercises that I use and that I prescribe to students because they are a, a something that you can focus on without having to do a whole song. Also, what happens sometimes is if people are hearing the song and it sounds right, but yet they're not getting the point of the lesson. Maybe they're using really bad technique. Even though they're playing the song, they're using really bad technique. And they're like, yeah, but that's the song I'm playing it. So they think they've arrived, but when in fact they haven't learned the technique. So I think exercises are great for that. That being said, your favorite artist does not step on stage and play exercises. Boo, boring, that would be terrible, right? You want them to play their hit songs. You get mad if they don't play their hit songs the exact, the exact way they were on the record. So do I. So if they got on stage and played exercises, we'd be very bored with that. So ultimately, we're trying to play songs, but the exercises get you there, right? Sure they do. Probably one more. Probably one more. Okay, so we're going to do one more question, friends. Do not forget, a couple things, do not forget this before we get to this last question. PDF is link one below. It's there for you for free. It doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to enter an email on nothing. Click the link. It's yours. Uh, and it's, it literally will help you with all this and understanding. If you go through those exercises that I give you, I promise you, you're going to be leaps and bounds above the majority of the finger pickers out there. Okay? People who say that they can finger pick because they're doing more stuff like this. And there's nothing wrong with this, but... The stuff that we talked about in the advanced section, definitely higher up level, okay? Uh, so download the PDF. Second link below, should be the second link below, is free access to my beginner course. So join the movement today, my friends. The Unstoppable Guitar System Standard. It's like the top 30-something lessons that I teach every single one of my students. I've been doing it for decades. It's gonna get you to the place that you want to get to on guitar as quickly as as physically possible, okay? That's the second link below, do that. Um, like this video, hit the notification bell, subscription notification bell, all that stuff, and then share with a friend. Let's get to one more question and then we're gonna post that link to the Robbie video. Robbie is gonna be joining us there. Robbie Calvo is gonna be joining us. He's gonna be talking with us, so you do not wanna miss this. This guy is a gem, okay? And he has uh, some amazing things to, to tell us. Okay, how do I adjust to, to using only two fingers? My index finger is completely stiff with arthritis. Alan, okay, so you can do this, right? But obviously, if you don't have use of that, of that index finger, then you've got to compensate. So it's called compensation, and it means that you're going to have to, where it says I, you're gonna have to use your third finger, okay? Your, your middle finger, I should say. So you could do that, and you might be able to get away with using a lot with just those three fingers. The majority of the time when we're finger picking, we're really only using about three fingers, but sometimes we use a fourth, but you could go and, and grab that other string with that other finger, okay? There's not a set way to do it. So what you wanna do is you wanna compensate, use common sense. Uh, what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't just use two fingers. You've got, I mean, what, what's wrong with the other fingers? You got them, right? The first finger's gone, great, get rid of it. You don't need it, you got others. So now you can at least use your thumb, middle, and ring finger, but you could bring your pinky in too, now you're back to normal, right? So, uh, but Eric, that doesn't feel comfortable. Uh, again, my Mandarin sucks because I don't do it very often. So it only doesn't feel comfortable because you don't do it. And that's everybody in the chat here, okay? Friends, I love you so much. This has been a great episode. Let's go right now. Uh, look in the chat here because Emmy's going to post it again to the video that we're doing with Robbie that's going to drop like in five minutes. 
six minutes, something like that. Robbie's gonna be in the chat, I'm gonna be in the chat, it's gonna be a party. Afterwards, it's a pizza party and a pizza pool party at my house. Yeah, let's do this, all right? See you in a few.